So I came to the heartland into the city, that means the end. And I dwelt there, and the Lord said to me, I will make you invisible among the people. What do you see? A door opened, and I entered in, and I saw the poor from all different races of people, both men and women. And I saw them laboring under the harsh rule of their taskmasters, and they were driven as far as they could go, under harsh conditions and for little pay. And as I pondered this, another door opened. Inside this place were the leaders saying, Welcome, let us teach you about our kingdom. And they boasted in their accomplishments, even giving large figures concerning their income. And one of them said, This year our projected sales will top $80 million. We are on the rise, with much more prosperity to come. And I looked back and I saw the poor, and my heart was puzzled. On one side I saw great wealth and boasting, and on the other side I saw hard labor and low pay, and the two did not match up. I asked the Lord about this, and he said, Slave labor, except this time it's legal under their law. The nature of man changes only by the hand of the Lord. The rich still lord it over the poor. And then the door closed behind me. Another door was open for me, and I entered in, and I saw the helpless and those stricken with all forms of diseases of the body and of mind, hopelessly stricken and helpless. And I saw them oppressed and tormented by those who, for pay, took care of them. Although they were there to help these pitiful ones, many of them were concerned about other matters, and they spoke to these poor ones worse than they would speak to dogs. And I said to myself, where is mercy? There were dark spirits all around, and various ones were afflicted and made ill by them. I beheld a young girl and a demon stared through her eyes. When it saw someone watching it, immediately it went more deeply into the girl so as not to be detected. Gossip, slander, and drunkenness were thick, and many who hated the Lord were given authority there. The Lord's name was mentioned often, but only by those who held to a form of godliness, although they had denied its power. When one of the Lord's watchmen came, they cried, Foul, crazy, a violent man. Better to hear diviners who call themselves prophets. And I told the people that the spirit of Elijah was at work, calling men to repentance and to a proper relationship with God. And that after Elijah would come, Elisha, with a double portion and fullness of the spirit of God, and the Lord said to me, Behold, the number I will show you. And I looked and I saw the number, 144,144. And I spoke to the people and told them to hearken and to prepare their hearts, for in the days of Elisha the two bears would again be called down as a curse, these being the bear of Wall Street and the great Russian bear. And behold, the bull will run while the bulls are champions. And when the Jordan is finally removed, the bear will devour that which the bull has taken. For the Jordan is a necessity if one is to succeed. The Jordan and the cross are the necessary provisions for one to enter into the promised land. And I looked and beheld a vision. I saw the Red Sea parted and God's people passing through on dry land. And I saw an army of angry men on horseback coming behind them with murder in their eyes. And I said to myself, surely they will die, those who attempt to destroy God's people. And the Lord said, Behold, just as I did to Pharaoh, have I done to the leaders. Their hearts are hardened and your labors shall be increased. Behold, the sealing of God's true servants has begun. And I heard the thundering voice of the Lord and with trembling hands I wrote down that which he spoke to me. And he said, Woe be to you, all you enemies of the cross. To all you who say, We do not want this man to rule over us. Woe be to you. Woe be to you who merely take my name to cover your sins, yet you refuse my cross. 
my bread, my robes of righteousness. Yes, even me, says the Lord. Woe be unto you who embrace covetousness and refuse correction, who turn my house into a social order and not a house of worship. Woe to you who have drawn my watchman near to merely tickle your ears. When the strong message comes, instead of contrition, you embrace murder to protect your idolatrous hearts. And how you murder my servants, though they come to you in love and in the spirit of hope. Instead of repentance, you have opted for murder, you sons of Cain. My wrath is even now being kindled against you. You take my name and bring reproach upon yourselves in sight of all and for all to see. And behold, here is your judgment, even now, because you have chosen to make my house a social order and not a house of worship and prayer, and because you have chosen to shout and not bow down before me, behold, your prophets shall hear a mixed word, for none draws close enough to hear with clarity my still small voice amid the din and uproar of your congregation. It is true that the gifts are without repentance, but a leavened mixed word does not bring the life you think it does. It only leads to lukewarmness, and that I shall not tolerate. A contrite heart and a broken spirit I shall not despise, but shouting lukewarmness and pride I shall reject, says the Lord. Behold, the day is coming, when you shall look, and behold, the righteous man shall not be found among you. And only words mixed with vain imaginings from your lukewarm prophets shall be heard, words that do not bring life. Woe to you who are at ease in Zion. Woe be to those who say rapture, rapture, and refuse to pay the price of bearing their cross. You who refuse to lift a finger, yet lay heavy loads for others to bear. The spirit of the Pharisees is upon you. And you, likewise, will perish if you do not repent. Woe to you who have assumed charge of my household, yet you beat my messengers who come to you for your correction. Do you not know that I will come upon you in an hour you know not, and will cut you to pieces and assign you a place with unbelievers as your reward? Peace and safety you shout, and in so doing deceive yourselves from any preparation. Woe to you who seek the deeper things and embrace Jezebel and not me, says the Lord. My path will lead you to the cross. The true treasures of the living word lie through and beyond the Jordan, the place of death to self. Jezebel will lead you to circumvent the cross and not go through it. Have I not said that I am the door to the sheepfold and all who enter in must enter in through me? And anyone who does not enter in through me is a thief and a robber. There is no other way whereby you can partake of the true heavenly treasures, but through me and through the cross of death, wherein you will indeed find life. Pray, pray that you will understand this, but woe to you who have twisted the cross and made it a dainty thing. For it is not a dainty thing, but an instrument of death, in the very spirit of Rome, you have carelessly romanticized the cross and taken away its use. Woe be to you. O oh, my people, O oh, my people, it is not my desire that any man should perish. And therefore I have made provisions for you. But you must accept the path that I have chosen. My path lead to life. But that life comes through death. When you let the cross do its work in your life, you shall then know the power and the life that is hidden from the proud. Won't you hear my voice? Draw near to me, and I shall draw near to you. Look therefore to me and not to any man. Draw near to me and hear my still small voice. Behold, the day is coming when the proud shall be swept away. Therefore humble yourselves before me, and in my time I will exalt you, says the Lord.